Okay, we have the Rune Bear coming up. But after that, we have Scaling Mist Beyond, and he should be pretty easy. And then there's like another four bosses, I want to say, in Weeping. And then we're done. Then we go back to the main part of Limgrave. I always forget one way there after that drops a dead end. Every time. I see the cave moss, I'm like, it's not that way, but it actually is that way. Because if you turn around, there's nothing but a wall. Man fights bear with torch. Real? Real. Man refuses to get hit while fighting bear with torch. Real? Also real. Scaly misbegotten. I'm not even gonna touch this graze. I do it out of disrespect. Do not respect this boss. And it's pretty easy to get to him. You don't really have to run through much here. Like I'm already halfway through the dungeon. <laughs> Probably more than that with the elevator at the beginning. We're in. He just doesn't do like any damage at all. He has insane delays though on his attacks. Rusted anchor. Insanely good weapon. I still can't believe how fast that new game plus was with that weapon. Like nothing else is even close. The next closest weapon's probably like 20 minutes slower. Which I, I guess that's not really close. 20 minutes slower in terms of like fighting and bosses. That doesn't include run time, or like running time or whatever. Anything else. The Wing of Estelle was not as fast as I thought it was. It's definitely on the faster end, but I figured it was gonna be like close to the time of the Rusted Anchor, but it wasn't. I think either Merica's Hammer or the Wing of Estelle, though, is like the next fastest after the Rusted Anchor. Can't remember which one, though. I don't know why the Rusted Anchor is so good. Like, I had a great, I had probably the best infusion you could have for it, but still. It's just so much faster than everything else. I was not expecting it. Level? No. Damn. Just shy. I'm still trying to think about like what I want to do for DLC when it comes out. After like the first playthrough. I think I want to do like three playthroughs of it. And then start weapon runs. The first one's just going to be blind. The second one, I'll try and do all the bosses. And the third one, I'll definitely, you know, try all the bosses again. But maybe with like bad weapons or something just to try and uh, get a feel for them. And then after that, I think I'll start working on some of these weapons. Maybe like do a weapon I've done just DLC and then do a DLC weapon run. And do all hundred whatever bosses we're going to have. Something like that. But it's probably going to be like two straight months of Elden Ring. I would imagine. Stop. Okay, the bleed's not good. Stop, stop. Actually gonna die. A lunge in that attack always gets me. Like, I don't ever think I need to back up enough. 
but I knew it was coming there. Yeah, I think... Hmm. I'll probably do that. I'll, like, um... I'll limit the pool of, like, random weapons to be weapons I've completed in Elden Ring. And then weapons that are exclusive to DLC. And you guys can pick from from those. And we'll just do every other run. So, like, one run will just be finishing a com completed run, and then the next run would be a new DLC weapon. And doing hundred-something bosses. That's probably what I'll end up doing. I just want to, like, get a couple playthroughs before I start doing them, though, because otherwise, like, the first run-throughs of the DLC are going to be, like, super bad. Maybe, like, the Godskin Peeler and the Celebrant Sickle all over again. And in, I guess, some cases, the Black Bow. Because the Black Bow is pretty slow, but it was faster than uh, the Godskin Peeler and the Celebrant Sickle, which shouldn't be a thing. At least at this point, there's no way a bow run should be faster than, like, any melee weapon. Should have stayed in your little tornado. What a horrible mistake you've made. I wonder if we're going to see any base game bosses in the DLC. Like a dungeon boss or something. Like an ancient hero. For example, I hope not just for the sake of having new things to fight, but you never know. I could see definitely some enemies getting reused. Maybe they just changed the model for like the generic soldier. I didn't do, uh, did I do the Earth Tree Avatar? I went to the Earth Tree. I don't actually know if I did. I think I did. Oh, I did. Wow. <laughs> totally zoned out for that fight, my god. You know, maybe we get another flower boss. Don't have enough of those. It's really only two, but two is too many. I think one's fine. Weeping is done. Back here. So we got Coastal Cave. And then we gotta make our way to the Pumpkin Head. I think maybe I'll get a character to like max new game. And then do DLC on that. That could be fun. I was also thinking about going through like every new game cycle. Uh, and doing DLC on every new game cycle. Because I feel like after that I would probably know the DLC pretty well. All right, let's go Endurance. The only problem with that is I'd have to do the base game a couple times, or like every time, I guess. So I couldn't just focus on DLC. I probably wouldn't do all bosses. I'd do all DLC bosses, but I wouldn't do all bosses in the game. I think the start of DLC runs, though, are going to be pretty brutal, because, like, my plan for those is to do Radon and Moog for the Great Runes. And I don't think it's going to be very easy to get much health for Radon if he's my first Great Rune. So I think I just have to get really good at that fight. I mean, I'll, there's a couple bosses I can do. Like, I'll do um, the Crystallion and the Sealed Tunnel to get the Bell Bearing. And the Onyx Lord, sorry, Onyx Lord in the Seal Tunnel, Crystallion and Ray Lucaria Crystal Tunnel. And then just go health. Gotta do Magnus too. Let's 
It's gonna be a lot of spinning. Okay, where are we going here? Yeah, there's gonna be so much setup for DLC weapon runs. Oh my god. Now that I think about it, I gotta get like plus 15. Oh yeah, Falling Star Beast and Silly Crystal Tunnel. I'd probably end up doing that too. Insane tracking. Look at him spit around like a madman. He's mad. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Am I on the wrong side? Oh, I am. All right, nighttime. So we got Knight's Cavalry and Patches and then the Duelist. And then we have, I think, another like 12 Limb Grave bosses, maybe something like that. Might be a little less before Kaelid. We should get to Kaelid in this hour. Hopefully. Don't think we'll do much there, but should be able to get there. head shake he does when he dies just looks so goofy to me I don't know why I'm waiting for one day to just randomly die there instead of actually living is there a timer or something where like you can't be invaded after you load in and that's why this quit out works something I never really thought about till now like maybe you can't be invaded for like 10 seconds or something My man patches. Well, well, well. Thought you'd just help yourself to a man's personal belongings, huh? You scheming little thief. The gods demand. Ah. Stop up your court. Brother, I will tank your spear. I don't care. Get out of here. Where's the thing normally? Is it over here? Oh, it's way over here. Couldn't remember. I don't know, the invader kind of showed up like three seconds after the loading screen, so I don't know if the 10 second hypothesis is really a thing. Torrent! I, the, come on, why? Why can I not use torrent? So the duelist, then we have the tree sentinel, and then Groveside Cave. Stormfoot Catacombs, and then the Crucible Knight in the Everjail. And then one, two, three, four, five more live grade bosses after that for now. It's like, what is that? Ten? Ten more live grade bosses till Kaelid, I think. You always have to watch out for the imps in the ceiling. Because sometimes they will just, you know, do an attack as they're falling. Like a plunging attack, I guess, more or less. Doesn't happen in every dungeon because I don't think it happened here, but there are somewhere it will happen. Duelist with hammers. Wonder if I can just stunlock him with staggers. Thank you, hyper armor. Didn't get it there, unfortunately. What is this attack? I can't, I can't move, man. I'm. I just got stunned. <laughs> All right. Hmm. True combo, apparently. 
Even with this armor, like, I couldn't do anything there once I got hit. Damn it. At least he missed me with that. I do love that you can just do the same thing you can do with like great swords. Tricky thing here is the range isn't so good. But with like bigger weapons, you can just do two charged R2, stun them, repost, and then you just repeat over and over again. Hey, okay, where are we going? First step. You can basically do the same thing with a torch, but not quite, because you don't do the repost. Everything else is the same. See a tree sandal. Alright, Beastman of Fair Missoula. Then the Watchdog, Crucible Knight. Then we got the Bell Bearing Hunter. What are you doing, man? You're just facing the wrong way. He turned around. I'm like, <laughs> this is very confused. Okay. Nope, I need this. Take this out. I'm trying to remember how long St. Trina's Torch took. I assume this will be slower. Maybe not much slower, though. I don't know, I don't, I don't know what deals more damage. They're both pretty bad, but the other one had sleep. It's the only reason I think it might be faster. Hmm, now he's gonna rest, but it's fine. Plenty of healing. Okay, I gotta wait for this one. Damn imps. Continue forward, just go. Honestly, you could probably drop down from above onto this thing. I just don't really want to risk failing. It's kind of like the perfumer, or no, was it the unsightly catacombs with the perfumer? Reminds me of that. But the imps are more threatening, I think, than the misbegotten. Out of here. Crucible Knight. And yeah, these guys have torches too. Actually, no, I shouldn't kill them. They're like kin. They just like me. I feel like it's gonna be very hard playing this game for the next what is it, 80 days till DLC? Because like I just look at everything and I'm like, what if they do this in the DLC or that? Like, what's the state of the earth tree in the DLC? I was looking at the tree there for a second, and I'm like... What's going on with that?
what's the story of the DLC? This hidden world. Is it real? Feels like it's probably real. I hope there are no more ballistas, though, in the DLC. I do not want to do another ballista run. Unless it's, like, actually good. Which, I don't know why it would be. It would be cool if they gave us another ballista bolt, though. Like, another type of ballista bolt. Because that would actually make the jar cannon run so much easier. At least right card easier. There was that repeating crossbow in the trailer, and I don't know if that's going to be like its own class of weapon or not. Like, how's that thing not going to be better than all the crossbows? I'm sure the damage per shot won't be that good, because you have to balance it, but still. And I guess it'll just like chew through bolts. That could be a problem. Stone Sword Key, I think we're actually good on these. I'm gonna get it though, because I might use another one for like the, um, whatchamacallit, I can't think of the name of it. The Green Turtle Talisman. Because I think I have like 17 right now. And I've used, I have 16 and I've used three. All I know is that... Not well. I'm gonna try something. I wonder if you can just walk away from him and talk to, like, talk to him, then just walk away so the conversation ends and see if that spawns a fight. There. There's a Let's see. Because I always listen to the dialogue completely, but yeah, that works. Neat. Good to know. I'll try it with Muriel, too, when we get to wherever it is. Oh, that was actually kind of sick. Okay, man. Might have been a little early, but I think it's because I dodged to his right. And the hitbox continued. Yeah, well, that's unfortunate. That won't go through the... Did that hit me? I felt the vibration like it hit me, but I don't know if it did damage to me. Brother, I don't even know where you are. Can you chill? God, it's so dark without this torch. We have to fight in the door frame. Yes, we do. I don't know what he's uh, aiming at. Stop it. Oh yeah, I forgot to change my title once again. I think it's still since we're in New Game. Classic. Hopefully I'm in the right game directory at least. Should be. Black Knife Assassin. Easiest one. The one that's missing like 30% of its health. I should level up here, actually. This is a warp back to the Grace dungeon. Let's go with that. We'll lose 12k. I can live with that. That's not too bad. The Uchi dungeon. Uchi Katana. Every Uchi is done in all the games. I did, I think, DS1, 2, and 3 in a row. 
pretty much. You finished your DS2 and Demon Souls weapon wheels? Nice. How long did it take? Are you doing the OG Demon Souls or are you doing the remake? this assassin killed because this is not the assassin's blood I don't think the assassins really bleed like they have like it's like black blood I guess it's not you know normal human blood because if you were post him it's just like black and gray I think take that Forty minutes it felt like that's not too bad if you typed out everything or well like yeah you said you typed out everything right you typed out everything that's not too bad for both of them alexander's alive he stays alive because i don't need him for this run he's stuck sorry man see you in Kaylin. okay so this boss you cannot repost, and I think he might be resistant to fire, so this will be a longer fight than normal. I mean, it still probably won't be too bad, because nothing in Limgrave's really that bad. I wonder what the, uh, the longest boss on average is, actually. I'd say Godric, if I had to guess. Mmm, this way. Always down. You're in mobile, so you had to open two separate tabs, one with the wiki and the other with the wheel. Oh god, yeah, that, that would take a while. I feel like that's a feat if you can do that in 40 minutes, going between tabs constantly. I think we'll get like one boss in Kaylee done. <laughs> Just looking at the time. Yeah, there aren't a lot of weapons in Demon Souls. I think there's 78 in total. With bows, staves, and uh... What's the other one? Talismans. Or catalysts, I think they call them. Catalysts and talismans. I think I've already done 10 Demon Souls runs. But I've done more Bloodborne than Demon Souls. And Bloodborne's got like a third of the weapons. I do wonder what the longest break between Bloodborne runs will be. We'll be done with Bloodborne, though, before we're done with, like, any other game. We'll be done with Bloodborne before it's even close to being done with any other game. Probably. I can't say for sure, but probably. It's a good chance of that. Even with the 50k point redemption. Blue Dancer can't warp out. Yeah, Bloodborne does have more bosses, especially if you do chalices. Okay, Groveside Cave, we're leaving here. We gotta go to Limgrave Tunnels. Interesting how it's Limgrave Tunnels. It's more than one tunnel, but every other tunnel, I think, is just one. Ray Lucaria Crystal Tunnel. Uh, what other tunnels are there? Anything else with the word tunnel? Hmm. Gale Tunnel. There might be, like, one more somewhere. Altus Tunnel, Old Altus Tunnel. I might be dead here. Oof. Okay, we're fine. This is Limgrave Tunnels, though. Could be like a translation thing. I don't really know. Not sure how one became tunnels and the rest are all tunnel. But doesn't really matter. Just grinding the weapons of specific games so I don't get rusty, so I'm grinding all DS1, all weapons, all bosses. Yeah, that makes sense. I definitely have moments where, like, I haven't played a game in a while, and then it, I'm just, like, forgetting how to play it. Oh, I didn't want to go all the way down. I do this not all the time, but it's been happening a lot lately where I'll just take this elevator all the way down. You have to get off, like, here. But yeah, that happened to me with DS2 on the Defender Greatsword run a little bit. 
It was almost deathless, oddly, in New Game, but I definitely felt some rust. And the run was still fine, but I get that. For me, I just like mixing it up because I know that uh, if I had to do 308 straight Elden Ring weapons or 250 straight DS2 weapons, I would go nuts. If I did, like, I, I just couldn't do it. I need to mix it up. And honestly, there probably will be a time where I have to do, like, only one game, and honestly, the game will probably be Elden Ring, because it has the most weapons. But I'm going to try and limit it as much as I can. Good fight. Probably around Elden Ring and maybe DS2? Yeah, pretty much. Maybe DS3, but DS3 it's like such little playtime because it's not a long run. So even if I have a DS3 run, I'm done with it in like two days. Two, three days. Whoops. With my schedule. Like I could do a DS run, DS3 run in one sitting, no problem. You're talking like four hours, four or five hours for New Game and New Game Plus for most of the runs. For Elden Ring, it's much longer. For DS2, it's definitely longer. It's probably like 10 hours in DS2. Bloodborne's much longer. Demon Souls I could do in a couple hours, five hours, depending on the weapon. Some might be longer, but same with Dark Souls 1. But DS3 is definitely the fastest for me. Damn. We're not really gonna fight on this thing, are we? Oh, we are, I guess. Oh boy. Nothing like fighting on uneven terrain. It's funny, a gill usually doesn't take a long time, but I think with the torch, Dealing fire damage to it, that's probably why it's taking so long. This one is my fastest, I'm not perfect, but I can get all bosses run at about four to six deaths pretty consistently. Yeah, that's not too bad. That's pretty solid. Dying, not dying is very important too, because it just saves time. Ah, stop. Especially in a game like DS1 where the runbacks are so long. So, Falling Star Beast coming up. Ah, come on. You got your ratting to a cinch, you know, everywhere inside and out. That's good. I, uh, I, mine and my rats, my runs are spaghetti. <laughs> In Dark Souls 1. Having to go for, like, random infusions and the upgrade materials. That's why once I get to New Game Plus, and this is, like, the same with all the games, it's like once you get to New Game Plus, it's not bad at all, because you don't have to worry about all that stuff. Don't have to worry about upgrade materials. Don't have to worry about infusions. Like, you have everything you need, now you just have to go and fight everything. Ah, come on. Out of my way. Remember where all the upgrade materials and the embers are? I wish I did. I think I end up buying most of them anyways. Or a lot of them.
The dragon scales, I think, are the most annoying. Or Titanite. Actually, okay, Titanite scales and dragon scales. Or Titanite. Demon Titanite? Whatever it's called. Nice. What a whiff. Alright. That's done. I need to take the portal out. Nope. Take the portal. Thank you. Should probably rest there and go back to or go to the round table. A lot of Elden Ring today though. I gotta do the inseparable sword after we do another or an hour of the Giza wheel. Giza's wheel. Am I dead? Might be dead. Oh, I lived. Hang on, I'm gonna warp. Oh I can't, I gotta rest. Okay, let me go to the round table. I don't know, can I do this with six flasks? I think they're gonna deal. Probably, like, too much damage. I'm gonna go to the round table. I like how I'm just in the ground. <laughs> Forgive me to Take me away. Alright, back here. We'll do Nox to you real quick. I don't think this fight will be that bad. I don't know, it might be. Who knows? These, this boss is pretty annoying. They're just constantly running away from you, and their range is insane. My damage is not bad, which is surprising. I didn't think I'd be dealing as much damage as I am dealing. Okay, one down. Oh man, what a cool weapon. If only we got that weapon and did a similar thing. I don't think it's as cool when we get it. Unfortunately. I'll take that. Take your time to make your character as strong as you can getting all the Firekeeper souls. That's fair. All right, let's do hmm, endurance. I don't know why I'm even thinking about it. I know where it's going. 